on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. I have breaking news here. It's very important. It turns out Lizzo is not quitting the music business. Right. She just put out a video where she was wearing nothing but a bathing suit, by the way. A low-cut bathing suit. There's a lot to see. Oh. Uh, Anyway, she's not quitting music. It's the love of her life. No, she's uh, quitting caring about all the negativity. Well, we knew she wasn't quitting. Good for her. Yeah. I'm glad. You know what? I've decided to quit caring about all the negativity, Julie. That's going to change our relationship (laughs) right now. Mayor (sighs) Bowser was asked this week about all the crime in D.C. now that she's got her uh, wish to keep the Caps and the Wizards here, and more importantly, to funnel a whole lot of tax dollars to Ted Leonsis, who last I checked has plenty of his own. And she said this. I just got an update from my deputy mayor, and crime is down among in all categories Mm. In Washington, D.C., mm. especially those categories that so troubled us last mm. year with robbery and carjacking, mm-hmm. down more than 30 percent. There you go. So, Chuck Thies, the, the, the <laughs> statistics are better. So what are people complaining about, right? Well, well, good morning, Larry. Good, good morning, morning, Julie. Good morning. So let, let, let's 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 look at last year, 2023. OK, D.C. had the highest murder rate than uh, any time since the late 1990s, so a generation, basically back when we were the murder capital. Um, I would mean I, I would grade the district's uh, overall crime atmosphere as an F last year, and and I don't know anyone who would disagree. I mean, the carjackings were just insane, robberies, violent crimes, everything was just off the chain, solid F. So what we're doing now is we're bragging because we have a D, right? <laughs> right. I mean, that, well, that's that's a very fair analogy. We have a D. If the if the murder rate continues at the pace that it's at right now, which in general and unfortunately it increases over the warmer months, yeah. but even if it continues, we will have one of the worst murder rates in a decade. Remember, <clears throat> at the early part of the last decade, 2011, 12, 13, and 14. In general, we averaged around 95 homicides a year for that four-year period. Over the past three years, we're going to average well over 200. So at the very best, what we're bragging about is having double the number of murders than we had a decade ago. And I just don't think we should be bragging that. Is the trend positive? Are we heading in the right direction? Yes. But this is no time to be cheerleading. This is time to be doubling down on anti-crime efforts. Right. And the anti-crime efforts, by the way, that they removed over the course of the last 10 years to get us to where we are right now, number one. And also, Chuck, I would argue that one of the reasons that you might see an uptick in some of the statistics or a downtick in this case is because a lot of people are just refusing to go to D.C. They're just, I mean, their crime is down because there's not as many victims, potentially. Why we're seeing higher rates in Northern Virginia and Maryland. Right. Um, but, but so... I, it seems to me that this is a strange time to be doing a victory lap, as you just point out, and especially connected to this decision to throw half a billion dollars to Capital One Arena. It seems like their most important priority was to keep a basketball and hockey team here instead of maybe actually doing something for the crime ridden neighborhoods that continue to be neglected. Well, it's important that that arena be functional. Uh, and it's important that there be teams there because the entire economic development rubric around it is premised on a combination of about 120 events happening there per year with thousands of people attending them. So it's important. And um, uh, it it would have left a gaping hole in in downtown D.C. But the the money that we're offering to Monumental Sports, a.k.a. Ted Leonsis, is fairly extraordinary. Uh, I believe, as a matter of fact, I don't believe, I'm sure that at the beginning of this process, we were talking about $300 million. Yeah. Now we're talking about a half a billion. It's basically going to come in $177 million increments over the next three years. And we're doing that at a time when the district is wrestling with somewhere around an $800 million funding shortfall. So it's, it's, it's going to be tricky to... Um, to actually figure out how all this works into the budget. Uh, But that money 
is basically money that we're kind of borrowing or robbing Peter to pay Paul. I wouldn't I wouldn't believe it would go into uh, anti crime measures otherwise. Um, oh, okay. we'll, we'll see. The mayor is going to release the budget today. She actually released it late last night, but she's going to present it formally to the council today and talk about where she made cuts and, and, and where she sustained uh, funding. So we'll see where the priorities are. I'm told there's been a lot of cuts to early childhood programs, which troubles me um, very much so, but we'll see later today. Well, related to that, uh, Chuck, I, I'd like to get your thoughts on um, on this issue, we when some of the carjackings were being reported on, it was really horrifying to see how young some of these carjackers were. We're talking 12 and 13 year olds. And now it turns out that uh, there is a chronic absenteeism problem. 60% of high school students in Washington are chronically absent from school. 43% of all grade levels were chronically absent during the 2022-23 school year. Mayor Bowser has said that she's got new legislation to hold parents accountable, but then she says, but they won't punish parents. So I'm really confused confused what the sort of what the plan is here. Do you know anything about this new legislation? Uh, I've heard about it, but, you know, holding parents accountable and not punishing them. How do you hold someone accountable? And not yeah, them? yeah. That exactly. just, just makes no she sense. She might call them but, bad names, maybe. Right. Be a meanie face but, to them. Yeah, but 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 beyond that, um, and, and, and I don't know the parent of every chronically truant or chronically absent student, but I'm going to guess that the overwhelming majority of those parents aren't the type of parents who care much. And, and I'm not saying they don't care about their children and love their children, but they don't care enough to deal with their children uh, being chronically absent um, or fixing the problem or even knowing. So I don't think holding those parents accountable is, is going to uh, get at the root causes of this truancy problem. Well, and by the way, let's be clear, this truancy problem is nothing new. The trend started in 2016 when about 21 percent of the students were chronically truant, which yeah. is around the national average. But every year until the pandemic, because we didn't keep these records during the pandemic, every year it's increased until it hit 42 percent. Yeah. Well, and, and like you said, it's 60 percent in 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 high schools. It is it is almost 100 times higher among black students than white students. Yeah. And the trend begins in high school. You and, see and, it the freshman year of high school. And Chuck, it didn't really help that they they kept those schools closed unnecessarily for so long. It conveyed a real message to these kids that school doesn't matter, and frankly, it's sent it to the parents too. Well, and, and I would say punishing parents is the only way. To, the reason a kid goes to school when they don't want to go to school is because they're afraid that they're going to get in trouble with their parents. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. these kids aren't afraid that they're going to get yeah. in trouble it with their parents, yeah. so you got to put pressure on the parents to put pressure on the kids. I'm with you. That's how these but things But we work. also have to... But this is really important. We also have to understand why the kids aren't going to school. It's an enormous when you when you go from eighth to ninth grade, you see this enormous increase in chronic absenteeism and truism, uh, tru 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 truancy. It, it's an enormous increase, and we have to figure out what is going on between eighth grade and high school to see this quintupling. There's something I, that's happening, I and think, we have to. I think it's kind of simple. Nobody's making them go. Honestly, I mean, isn't that? Yeah. The, 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 no, it's like, why, why aren't you in school? Well, who's going to make me? And there's no answer to that. But why why don't kids want to be in school, I guess, is oh, the, Chuck, is the I question. Oh, I, I, did, I didn't want I to school. Wanna be, did I, you want to go to school? Chuck, were you a really good kid? Come on, Chuck. Kid. Were you that good? <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about the things that I did in high school, but I had good reasons <laughs> to be there. <laughs> okay. You know what? That's a deal across yeah. the board. Let's yeah. all have that agreement. Chuck Thies, always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. 845 right, WMAL you. traffic and weather every time. It's <laughs> first on the fives. Here's Jamie Witten, who, by the way, I bet you she had a perfect attendance. Yeah, I bet she was Absolutely. really good. She's in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. Traffic 